This is 22 of my favorite survival tips and building tricks for Ark Survival Evolved. If you think I missed some of your favorites or found one of my tips very useful, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know. And remember to hit that like button if you found this helpful at all. And even consider subscribing for more survival tips and building tricks. I'm Zim and let's survive together. You can actually add a torch to any saddle you want. You first take off the saddle and you just drag a torch onto the saddle. Any saddle will work. And you put the saddle back on and there you go. And it'll light while you fly. Any saddle will work. All you have to do is throw the torch on the saddle when it's not equipped on the dino. So with this one easy step, you could actually save your dino from taking damage. So when you're falling, you just jump off at the last second. And you're good to go. It could save you and your dino a lot of damage. And I do this all the time. To get the best success, to get the high level tames that you want. You just kill off the low level dinos to increase your chances of getting a high level dino in the area later on. And you can do this with any dino. Some dinos have longer spawn rates than others. So a neat little trick, if you want to fill up your food faster on your dino, this could actually help a lot with Deodons. Instead of just waiting for him to eat slowly or manually feeding him yourself, or even with the best food, it can take forever. As long as he's got plenty of food on him. What you can do, you could actually just leave render distance and it'll fill up automatically. Now let's head back. And there we go. He should be all full. Now he's at full food. And you could do this with any dino too. So when you knock out a Quetzal, there's nothing worse than it falling in the water and drowning before you can tame it. So what you can do, if you have access to Equus, you can actually lasso the Quetzal and pull it out of the water. And there you go, your Quetzal's safe. So with the lasso, you can actually pull your dino out of the water. I always keep my flyers on passive, and this is why. If your flyer is about to get attacked and you want to jump on your dino, it's obviously harder to do that when they're flying around. So by setting your dino on passive, if they were to get attacked, you could actually jump on your flyer a lot easier and get away. They might take a couple hits, but you could still get away a lot quicker than having to try to chase your flyer around. And that can help save you and your dino. Another good tip is you could actually hockey a button to tell your flyer to land. You could also whistle land, of course, or you could hockey the whistle command to land the flyer. And I've used backslash for mine and it works pretty well. Even when they're following you, they could be a little finicky. So I just hockey my land button to make it really quick for me. So this is actually a neat little trick for your otter. Did you know otters can actually hold multiple artifacts of the same type? So when you're artifact hunting, you definitely want to bring your otter with you. And you want to put points into weight in the otter so we can carry more artifacts. So you just pick up the artifact and there you go. He can carry multiple artifacts of the same type. And you just carry them around with you when you're hunting artifacts. And did you know otters can actually help incubate eggs? If you don't have electricity, otters can be very useful and they're pretty easy to tame too. If you're in a bad place to incubate eggs, drop it between some otters and you're good to go. And they're super cute too. Another very useful trick, when you're reloading your shotgun, when you're reloading in first person, you have to reload each cartridge at a time. But if you reload in third person, you only have to reload one cartridge. And you got six bullets again. So just reload your gun in third person, it could come in really handy. Here's a good one for you. Did you know you could actually tame a rock elemental with just a pteranodon? You make sure your pteranodon is following you and he's at the highest follow distance and he's on passive and you just run over to a rock elemental just high enough, but he can't hit.
And he'll just stare at that Dranodon the whole time. <laughs> Set up your cannon. And you can just take your time and knock him out. Makes it super easy. And there you go. Knocked out. And one of the biggest tips I think when you're starting out, always tame a Triceratops first. First of all, he collects berries, which is super important for narcotics. And he can protect himself pretty well against tougher enemies by pushing him back before they can even hit him. It works out pretty well. So he collects berries, defends you, and he's a pretty easy tame. These square buildings, they work, but they could be so much better with just a little bit more parts. Pretty easy too, we'll show you how. So we'll be using SS mod pieces, but the vanilla pieces work the same way. We're gonna start off with triangles, six of them, two, five, six. All right, and then we're gonna switch to the squares and off every triangle, we're gonna put a square. Pretty simple, just go in a circle like that. And then we're gonna switch back to triangle and fill in the gaps too and now you start seeing the shape that we're we're starting to get which is very fun and yeah you got a nice little shape and then to make the roof you just follow the same pattern and then you got a cute little little hut little circular shaped hut and of course you can make it bigger you could actually make it as big as you want just follow the same pattern but yeah works pretty well I keep behemoth gateways and doors and dino doors on me at all times. I'll set them down in a row, five of them. You just want to make sure you can fit through, but not too wide. And then you stick a door in the front and a door in the back. And you make sure the back one is closed and you make sure the front one is open. And you're ready to go. Now where's that bird? You just lure your tame into the box. And you escape. And then you shut the door and he's in. As you can tell, he can't fly up. And then you knock out your tame. And that's it. And when he's down and you're waiting to tame, you can even use the behemoth doors and gateways to protect your tame until it's ready. And now he's all safe in a box, ready to be tamed. To make the perfect base and get the perfect height, you can actually lower your foundations. You start with the foundation and you put a pillar in the middle. And when you set the second foundation, just move it around until it snaps lower. And there you go. And then you can remove this. And remove this. And you got a lower foundation. And you can do it again. Sometimes you got to move it around. There you go. And you can even do this on Quetzal platform saddles. Just get them to hover for a minute so it's a little balanced out. And just like that. So if you're extending your ceilings and you don't want the pillars to poke through the top, then what we do is you put the pillar down in the middle first, and then you clip it below. And you remove the top one. And there you go. Nice clean ceilings. So you can give your build a really cool look by adding pillars to the corner of your building. And we'll show you how. So what you do is place a fence foundation at the corner of your build. And that will allow you to place a pillar at the corner of your house. And that can give your build a lot of depth and character. Makes it look pretty neat. So to make your base look real nice, you could actually line up your pieces perfectly with this fun little trick. So what you do is you lay a ladder down first. And it'll center you perfectly straight. And you're perfectly lined up. You can grab your piece first. And line yourself up. It can come in real handy to make your house look real nice. And I think a fun way to make fences with fence supports. You lay down some fence supports first in a straight line or in any direction you're going. And you add some pillars on the outside. I like to switch it so it's facing out. 
You could even add some railings on top. And it looks pretty nice. Or you could even change the top to stone. So here's a good building tip for you. You could actually give yourself a double wall and it makes it look pretty cool with the insides out. And I'll show you how. So you just put the stone fence foundations on top of the foundations around the outside. And when you're putting up the wall, you can switch between the outside of the fence or the inside. So you place one on the outside and you switch and place one on the inside. Just like that. And there you go. It looks pretty neat too. You could actually stack water reservoirs on top of each other. And I'll show you how. So you first start with the straight metal pipe and then an incline pipe and then another straight pipe, another incline coming back and a vertical pipe going down and then another straight pipe. So now you could remove these and just leave the straight pipes and then you just rinse and repeat until you get the desired height now this part's important you have to add a vertical pipe to each straight pipe and then you add the reservoirs and then you can remove the straight pipes and there you go it could really make your base stand out. And I got another building tip for you. Did you know you could actually extend your foundations farther than the raft? So normally the game doesn't let you place any more foundations any further than the raft. So you just place a ceiling and then a foundation underneath and then just remove the ceiling. And there you go. You just can't build too far from the raft. It can actually go surprisingly far, giving you a lot of room to work with. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot. And comment down below what your favorite tip and trick is. And if one of my tricks you'd even know about. Thank you again and let's survive together.